I'm Chris Cattell. Uh, I'm a student at Hartford College, Oxford. Um, I'm going to tell you some stuff about what it's like here. So what do you study, Chris? So I, I study music. Um, I'm in my third year. Um, and at Oxford, that's sort of like lots of history of music and analysis and a bit of performance, a bit of composition, lots of things. So why did you choose to study music? It's an interesting question. Uh, I, was, I was on the border between studying English or music. Um, I said to my music teacher, do you think I'll be able to get into music? I don't really know how good I am. He said, yes, just go for it. You'll never know until you try. Um, and I, I was sort of, I found it more exciting than English, so, so I just went for it. So can you tell us a bit about the college that you're in? Yeah. Um, this is Hartford College. Um, it's uh, it's medium size in the number of undergraduates. It's about, I think, 300, 400 overall. Um, but it's quite small, sort of, in size. Uh, and it's, uh, it's very central. So one of the main university libraries, the Bodleian, is literally just across the road. Like, um, and it's, it's got a, one of the famous landmarks. If you've seen photos of bits of Oxford, you might have seen um, the Bridge of Sighs, or that part of Hartford College, which is quite cool. Are there lots of colleges in Oxford? There are, yeah. Um, 20-something? And how do you go about deciding which one you want to go to? Well, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a lucky dip. Um, so people on the open day often come around and look at a few. Um, there's no way to look at all the ones you know that you might apply to because there's just there's too many and they're all so far apart. So um, a lot of it is sort of looking at the prospectus and thinking, you know, this one looks like they're good at uh, rugby and I love rugby, or this one is like the kind of has the old look I really want in a college, or, or this one seems to be very modern, or this one has a big year. And, and there's a lot of information out there that you can get. Um, but at the end of the day, no matter what college you end up, probably still have a good time. So how did you find the transition from like secondary education to university? Um, it's a big change. Especially in terms of like, just how you lead your life as well as education. Um, because obviously you're much, much more independent than you are. In terms of like, learning and stuff, you have to take responsibility for doing things a lot more. What are you... Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's, I just... I think... Uh, yeah, I found it a bit... A bit tricky, but you get used to it, and it's... There's more free. In terms of your degree, which bits are you finding, like, most interesting, most exciting, and then most challenging as well? Um, most interesting, uh, probably my dissertation at the minute, uh, and... Uh, so that's on, sort of, popular music and cultural appropriation which is very cool, uh, and I get to read, you know, cause that's something I, a topic I get to choose myself, and then I get to write 10,000 words on it, um, which is which is very cool. Um, I like I like writing music as well, um, so I, I enjoy that part of the course. Um, I think the most challenging is perhaps uh, the amount that I have to learn for my exam at the end of the year. But, yeah, it's all, it's all interesting, which is important. And how do you think your school helped prepare you to study at university? Um, or did they? Yeah, I think there's that gradual transition from um, sort of, you know, primary school where everything is very, very, you know, this is exactly what you need to know, this is exactly the way that you're going to learn it, and then when you get to sort of sixth form, you're getting a bit more leeway and a bit more freedom, um, especially where I went. There's not so much sort of guidance on what you have to do. So um, that was good preparation for the kind of the freedom of university. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think you can ever... I think maybe some schools would prepare you very well for university uh, if they just completely leave you to your own devices, because that's almost what happens. But, mm. You can never be, you know, be here before you are. And what do you think about the workload? Is it too much? Can you cope with it? Does it get any easier? It gets easier. Um, I guess sometimes it feels like too much, but it, 
for me it's never been actually insurmountable and I do a lot of extracurriculars so um, you can always get it done but it is, it is it's trickier so for you what does a average day look like oh, um, well it depends if I've been out the night before doesn't it um, <laughs> Well, if I'm, if I'm having a day where I do some work, uh, I might get up, you know, set my alarm for 8.20, get up at 8.45 maybe, um, have breakfast in my room, uh, um, have a cup of tea, you know, crack on with maybe some, some reading in the morning, uh, maybe head out to the Radcliffe Camera, which is just across the road, it's a beautiful library. Um, then maybe in the afternoon, have a rehearsal for a, for a band I play with, a um, couple of hours playing some original songs, uh, and then maybe uh, do some more work, um, write, write some of an essay or something. Uh, and then perhaps in the evening I'd have uh, a service in the chapel, so I'd have a choir rehearsal for an hour and a half or something like that. And then, and then a service, uh, so I'm thinking maybe this is a Sunday. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in that case, I get free formal hall in the evening because I've seen the choir, which is a lovely three-course meal with candles in, in the college hall. So that, there's a day. So when you first started out at Hartford, did you find there was lots of jargon that you didn't really understand? Yeah. How did you cope with that? Um, there was there's a little. So they give you a freshers booklet at Hartford, and there's a, like a glossary of, of some terms you might have encountered. Like pidge. What's a pidge? A pidge is a it's a pigeonhole. Mm. But for some reason three syllables too long. <laughs> um, Hartford specific is DTB, that's quite a good one. It's abbreviation of down the bar. Oh. So good to know. <laughs> and what are the terms called at Oxford? Uh, yeah, so the terms are called weird things. So the first term is called Michaelmas. The second term is called Hillary, and the third term is called Trinity. And they're all named after feasts which fall or have before fallen within term time, um, like in the Christian calendar, which is a bit weird and really old. Mm. So a few other strange terms. What's a bop? A bop. Uh, a bop is a lot of fun. That's what a bop is. Uh, a bop, it's like a college-organised party, basically. Um, and some colleges will have them in their college and some have them out. So Hartford has them in a club called Plush. We hire out the club. All of the undergrads go to the club, subsidise drinks slightly. It's quite fun. And what do you normally look like when you go to a Hartford bop? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I, I look very sparkly. Uh, there was one <laughs> this week um, and I had lots of glitter on my face and I had a, a shirt which is basically made out of sequins. Um, yeah, fabulous. So other things you might wear, what's subfusk? Subfusk is um, like exam wear pretty much, like the formal wear. Um, so that's, it can be a number of things um, because they've relaxed the regulations a bit, but it's pretty much, if you're a guy, it's a black or blue suit, um, probably a white bow tie, although you can wear a black one, a uh, white shirt and a gown over the top, which is a peculiar Oxford thing. <laughs> And then if you're if you're a girl, it's like probably black skirt or trousers, uh, white blouse, a gown, and a ribbon or a bow tie. But, but it's you can switch it up. So going back to music, how do you think it's different studying music at Oxford to somewhere else, to so um, another university or a college? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so in my experience of. Uh, in my experience of um, like having done open days, which is probably as far as it goes, um, like other universities tend to try and pack less essays in to one term and ask you to do a bit less um, in terms of just hours of work. Um, so that's part of it. Perhaps in the case of music specifically, there are sort of two routes you can go down. So you can go to a conservatoire and do sort of very practical music making or you can go to university and do um, like more academic kind of things and Oxford is sort of at the far end of the academic one so it's like almost the most academic music degree you can do because it, although performance and composition are often the main focus on the course is, is like history, music history and analysis and sort of theoretical kind of thing. 
So how have you found the teaching at Oxford? Oh, um, I think varying. Uh, some of it has been absolutely brilliant. Like my tutor at Hartford. He's amazing. He's a fabulous man. Um, he's very, very friendly and very, very knowledgeable and very sharp. You know. um, I've had a, cu a couple of duff tutors uh, because you, you get sent around a bit. Um, who haven't uh, who haven't known not that they haven't known their subject because I think that's the thing everyone here knows exactly what they're talking about occasionally they've been sort of a bit wrapped up in, in things so um, but especially with my tutor here and, and some of my for example my analysis tutor is actually amazing um, and I feel like I've like with the tutorial system I've really really been able to engage with stuff that I wouldn't be able to engage with and do you feel like you have time to relax? Well, I think I relax whether I have time to or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think so. Especially if you um, if you can manage your time. Uh, yeah, I think time management is a really important skill to learn at university, or potentially before university. If <laughs> um, but you definitely have time off. Uh, like, I fill most of my time off with extracurriculars, but some people just you know, hang around, watch Call the Midwife. Uh, some people go out lots. There's, yeah, there's, there's a big student vibrant scene, I think. And finally, just how would you sum up your Oxford experience as a whole? Oh, oh that's a tricky question. As it's coming to an end. <laughs> oh, it is. Um, uh, wonderful, uh, challenging... Um, Full of lovely people, um, and I think I'm going to be very sad to be summarised. Thanks a lot. <laughs>